When you think of Istanbul, cats are not likely to be the first thing that comes to mind. This ancient city is famous for so much, but it's cats? Istanbul is the city of cats. And pretty much anywhere you walk, you'll see them. They're all over the, almost in front of every food shop around. A lot of dogs too. Not all cultures love their cats as much. Some cultures think that cats harbor evil spirits, but not here in Istanbul. They're really widely loved and taken care of. And there's even laws that protect them so that if you're caught hurting or abusing a cat, you can get a fine or into some legal trouble. I remember years ago, my brother Jim told me he loved this place because of all the cats he saw here. But where did they all come from? In times past, this alluring and epic place was known as Constantinople, and before that, Byzantium by its founders, the Greeks. The Romans coveted this place, stole it, and the Holy Roman Emperor Constantine put his own name on it. Napoleon, with an idea of conquering the world in his mind, said if the world were one, Constantinople would be its capital. So we were sitting here and a kitty just walked in the little restaurant that we found here in the cat park. And it just walked in like the cat owned the place. Jumped up on the counter and nobody seemed to care. It was very cute. The story apparently goes that the Ottoman Empire, when they were here, adored the cats as well, but this city, obviously the Roman Empire renamed it Constantinople, and before that the city was called Byzantium, the Byzantine Empire, and uh, apparently the cats go throughout history in this place, so the culture has really deeply adapted to having these cats all over the place. So they kind of uh, let them be and they let them exist and they feed them and they give them veterinary care. Uh, and everybody kind of leaves out food for them and they have little houses. So we're basically wandering around. What's the name of this park? Matcha. Matcha Park. Matcha Park here in Istanbul. And it's a place that is like a sanctuary for cats. But the whole city is a sanctuary for cats. They take care of them here. And uh, it's amazing. They're everywhere. They're about every 10 feet. <laughs> and so we're just wandering around today to meet a few of them. And in the olden times, or in the ancient times, they were handy for keeping rats out of the libraries, you know, because rats and mice like to eat paper. Uh, and I guess this is a vestigial remnant of that idea. But perhaps the one thing that shaped this city more than any other influence was Islam. Visitors and residents are reminded of that fact five times a day when the dulcet sounds of the call to prayer drift out from the minarets and mosques across this amazing city. But here is the twist. Islam also gave this metropolis its cats. As we wandered around this magnificent city, we hit many of the spots people would expect. 
And everywhere we went, there were the cats. With their big pointy ears and sultry eyes, we saw them in every corner of this city. Even our apartment that overlooked the Bosphorus and the entire city proved these critters were everywhere we looked and went. As we walked from Galata Tower to Karakoy to take a boat ride out onto the Bosphorus, they were there, prowling the garbage bins of the fish markets. They were also there waiting for us on the Asian continent as we took a ferry to the Anatolian side and we wandered the back streets and bustling markets of Katakoy. This part of Istanbul had a slightly different feel to it. Perhaps a more authentic, rebellious side revealed itself as we walked around. Posters seemingly celebrating communism and graffiti that, unlike American graffiti, seemed to show some real skill in the making. And the cat seemed different too, but perhaps that was just me. As we prowled the city streets and alleys behind the Egyptian spice market and the Grand Bazaar itself, they were there, watching, waiting, like they have for centuries. I kept asking myself, why all these cats? It was as we prepared for our next stop to the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia that we started to learn more about why all of these felines were here in this city. As a Westerner, I never really knew very much about Islam or of the story of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In some cultures, cats, and especially black cats, are believed to bring bad luck or are associated with witches or are seen as a bad omen. In countries such as England, Scotland, and other parts of Western Europe, there were beliefs that witches could transform into cats particularly black cats, and were believed to have evil powers. But this is not the case with Islam. As we sat outside the Hagia Sophia Mosque and listened to the call to prayer, I learned that the Prophet Muhammad himself had a cat named Mueza, and he was known to love and care for it deeply. In one hadith, it is narrated that the prophet cut off the sleeve of his robe rather than disturb his sleeping cat. The prophet Muhammad is also said to have praised the cleanliness and purity of cats. It is believed that cats are inherently clean and have the ability to purify the environment around them. In another hadith, it is narrated that the Prophet Muhammad said, affection for cats is part of the faith. Cats are believed to bring blessings to the households they reside in. There is another hadith that states that a woman was forgiven for her sins because she had once given water to a thirsty cat. So, the next time someone asks you, why so many cats here? You can tell them that the words of the Prophet Muhammad and the teachings of Islam are arguably the largest single influence on their abundance in this city. We also noticed there are lots of dogs here that seem to enjoy the same care and protections afforded the felines of this city. But Istanbul is truly the city of cats. So if you come to Istanbul, this is definitely the thing to do. They're really beautiful. 